In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the Bucklermen from the Warcrow starter set, Winds from the North, and we're gonna be painting them up. Now, if you have ever been following my channel or know anything about my painting, you probably know that I like painting non-metallic metal. Pretty much everything I've been doing for the last few years has always been non-metallic metal with just a, a little bit here and there using true metallics. Well, I really want to learn how to paint true metallics a little bit more. So I thought Warcrow would be an excellent opportunity for me to just kind of figure this out. So I started off with the Bucklerman, which have a lot of metal on them. I tried to follow the main paint job that the official miniatures have, except rather than doing it in the non-metallic metals that they've done, I'm actually gonna try and do this in the true metallics. So um, I began with just painting up one model and just kind of figuring out how I was gonna approach this. Now, when I went back to England, I picked up some of the scale 75 metallics and got a small selection of them. Now the Bucklerman themselves have a very, very dark metal, kind of almost black metal armor. So what better than black metal as a color? So I took the scale 75 paint black metal and I actually mixed it with a little bit more black paint just to darken it a little more. And then we just kind of covered the whole model in this paint. Once that was done, uh, then we had to get the gold trim done. And so I took some Necro gold as that was the one gold that I picked up from the scale 75s and I just painted the models with that. And I tried to be a little bit more careful, just marking out the trim of the model all in gold. Once I'd got this main bit of metal down and also the gold down, I wanted to try and approach it a little bit like I would with an NMM. So I just took pure black metal uh, without the black mixed in and uh, applied it as a highlight for the black metal with the black that we did do on the previous coat. I've also got this one called Speed Metal, which is basically a uh, metallic white, I guess. And so I just used that one to try to lighten uh, any of the metals that I had to add further highlights. I tried applying it. It felt a little bit different to how I would normally do NMM as the, the texture of the paint is quite different. However, it, as for a basic job, it kind of did the thing I needed it to do. When painting the sword, I didn't want it just a straight black metal the same as the rest of the armor. I wanted it to be highlighted a slightly different color. So I took Cobalt Alchemy, which is kind of like a blue metallic uh, color from the scale 75 range. And for the edge of the sword where it's sharp, I made this the Cobalt Alchemy color. And I think it was okay. It was just a very, very simple highlight that you can do just to make something look a little bit different. Once the metallics were down and we'd done some simple highlights of them, it was time to actually go and have a look at the cloth parts of the miniature. So for the pants, I painted these in leather brown. I also applied leather brown to the shirts, straps, boots, and everything else that was not metal, basically, um, just to kind of get that coverage in to begin with. We're gonna go in and change up the colors later. Then using some Vallejo Ivory, I mixed this with some of the leather brown to then paint over the pants. Uh, this I got lighter and lighter until we got really, really close to the ivory color. Once the pants were lightened enough, it was time to do the stripes. Now I'm not very good at freehand, so I started off with a light gray to sketch in the stripes first. Once I was pretty happy with where they were placed, they weren't perfect, but they did the job that I needed them to do. I then went over with a light blue gray. Oh, that was it, they were basically done. Uh, there was a bit of cleanup needed, so I just went back in with a bit of the ivory and leather brown mix just to straighten up some of the lines, but otherwise we were okay. Moving on to the skin tones, the only skin tone I have to apply is for the face. It's a very quick one here. So I use my fairy flesh set because I absolutely love using the fairy flesh set for doing uh, uh, a lot of skin tones. It just looks really, really nice, it looks really vibrant. So just doing some basic highlighting and getting the skin looking where I wanted. For the eyes, uh, I blacked out the eyes first and then with an ivory, we added in the whites of the eyes. These were then dotted with a black. I now felt it was about time to start adding a bit more variation to the clothing that the buckler man or buckler woman was wearing. 
we took some pro acryl mahogany and applied it to the boots and leather straps and bags that the character was carrying. Once that was done, we also took some black and I was able to do the soles of the shoes. So basically I lost footage on this particular model that I was showing you that I was painting here. For some reason, my camera just whited out for a while. It was weird, but I did record painting up the other Buckleman as well. I'm gonna show you how I did the bases. Basically, I took a dark brown, first of all, and worked that up to a lighter brown by mixing in some ivory. But then I wanted to add a little bit of grass in there as well. So using some uniform green, we just, just dabbled a little bit here and there. For the rock, we just then added grays, going from a dark gray up to a light gray, giving smaller and smaller highlights to try and give uh, the rock some texture. Now with that done, the main painting of the model was complete. But what I wanted to try and do is add a little bit more shadow to the model, a bit more shade to the model. To do that, rather than using an acrylic wash, we were gonna approach this one with an oil wash. So thinning down some black oil paint, we then went about covering the entire model all in black. Everything except the face, it seemed, on this one. Um, later on, I decided to actually cover the faces in all of them, because it just kind of tied everything together. Just having this very, very bright face coming out was a little bit weird. But once uh, we covered the whole model, uh, then we basically took a sponge, a makeup sponge, and wiped off a lot of this oil to reveal the model underneath. Now what that did was it meant that uh, a lot of the black would stay in the recesses. And because we're removing a lot of this surface uh, oil here, the, the true color underneath will come through. If you're using an acrylic wash, what tends to happen is it dulls that entire model. With an oil wash, you can actually keep removing and removing the oil until it shows you the original color that you painted underneath. Um, that way it can be a lot more vibrant and you create more contrast rather than de just desaturating the entire model. It's still kind of desaturated a little bit because we're painting it over with black, but it came out looking a little bit more tied together. I was a little worried though that the gold and the silver still didn't uh, have enough contrast from one another. So I also took some panel liner and tried to uh, accentuate uh, the recesses between the gold and the silver. Didn't quite work out as well as I had hoped, but it did, a bit of a job, I guess. Uh, may have made it a little too dark, to be honest. I may not have needed it. I wanted the bases to be snowy as well, so I painted a little bit of ivory onto the base to mark out where I wanted the snow, and then using some snow effect from Vallejo, I just added the snow texture to the base of the model. And then the model was complete. Here it is in all its glory. Now, it looks pretty good. I was pretty happy with it, but something wasn't right. It still looked a little bit too flat. I wasn't quite happy with all of them, to be honest. I painted up a whole lot of them and looking at them all, again, it was just very, very flat. Um, so I thought maybe there's something I could do to try and shake things up a little bit. And so I took my inks, because inks are a lot of fun to play around with in an airbrush, and I took some magenta and really thinned it down to almost like a glaze and put that one into the airbrush. And then spraying from below, I sprayed a very, very, very gentle pass of magenta around the model, mostly aiming for the metallic parts of the model, but also getting it on some of the cloth as well. This kind of gave it this iridescent shine of purple on the shiny armor, which looked kind of cool. Now, to make the opposite effect of that, we took some yellow orange azo and we sprayed this one from above. So you could almost see this iridescent shine. From a low angle, you could see lots of purple and moving up to a high angle, it moves into a yellow. And this made for a very nice transition. And then I was happy to say they were finished. This was really, really fun to approach. Um, went through quite a journey. I think there was a lot of steps that I didn't need. I don't think I needed the panel liner. I think I could have probably painted up all of the model a lot lighter initially anyway. I don't think I needed to mix the black into the black metal 
uh, I could have just gone as is. I think all of the cloth areas could have been painted a little bit lighter in areas and maybe in slightly different colors to try and accentuate them a little bit more for after the wash. The wash itself actually kind of tied them all together into the same kind of color, which then lacked a little bit of variation. Uh, the gold itself is also quite a dark gold. So if I could find a lighter gold, maybe that would be really nice. And I might come back and just try to re-accentuate the gold trim on the models because it gets a little bit muddy. Otherwise though, I think the models came out really, really nice. I love the bases and as a unit together, they look really, really cool. Anyway, what do you think? Do you like them? Um, would you have changed anything? What would you prefer to do? Well, how do you approach uh, true metallic metals, please leave some comments below. And if you'd like to see more, please comment, please subscribe, please like the video. And I hope to see you in the next video. We're gonna be painting up some orc hunters soon as well, uh, along with all of the special characters in the box. So I'm hoping to share those with you in videos just like this one. So yeah, thanks very much guys. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.